then I'm your bat. <laughs> Five reasons why I hate a vampire story. We've all got those pieces of media we absolutely despise. Films that we've found absolutely wretched. Music that we'd like to see go the way of the disco demolition. And of course, games that we'd like to see ran straight up Randy Pitchford's ass. Here is one such example. A vampire story. And what follows are five reasons why I feel it is possibly one of the worst gaming experiences I have ever had. Number one. It looks awful. Everything about this game is ugly and unappealing. The main character is this bobble-headed, tiny-waisted... thing. The villain is... well, just look at this. It's like the love child of Vivi from Final Fantasy IX and a Dementor. One of the character designs is a downright rip-off. It's clearly trying to emulate Tim Burton, but even Tim Burton often fails there. <coughs> The colours are all just painful to look at, and something about the animation is really off. And what makes that worse is the guy who was in charge was the lead background artist on the original Monkey Island. And the backgrounds in that looked really good, even for the time. I mean, honestly, how could anyone find any of what's presented in this game appealing? Number two. Its story is garbage. You're a captive vampire lady opera singer who's trying to escape from the castle of her sire and get back to Paris. Okay, at first you'd think that's a workable story. But no, somehow they managed to screw that up through overcomplicating the plot with the suggestion of darker forces at work. We're already dealing with vampires, we don't need to get darker. This isn't Buffy, okay? Essentially, having halves of two different games slapped together, second half of part one and first half of part two, and for some reason, they decided to have you in Traxylvania. I mean, why? For what purpose does it serve slightly changing the name other than a really bad opening joke? Furthermore, they commit the cardinal sin of sequel baiting. Or to be more accurate, not finishing the damned story in the first place! You can't do that! You can't just automatically hope that because you've had great success in the past, this will be the same. Moving on! I hope for salvation. <laughs> You'll be glad to see me then. Yes, you will! <laughs> Number three, the jokes. As previously stated, they open with bad jokes, but okay, look, I'm hardly one to claim any sort of moral superiority over the idea of using referential humor. I do it a lot myself in my D&D games, but one, I'm not paid for my bad writing, and two, almost every single joke is a reference joke. We're talking scary movie style jokes, date movie, epic movie, that style of humour. Here's just a sampling. Hey, uh, you know he's getting blood, right? You drink blood. Shh! Now is not the time to start that old argument. It's not blood, it's just, well... A real thick and uh, salty tasting mellow with a little uh, iron aftertaste? Is that what that is? Uh, something like that, yeah. Now I can find out how the All Blacks are doing. I really appreciate it. As a reward, can we borrow your clothespin for a while? It's pretty nasty down here, Mona. This place has more paper boys than a newspaper delivery convention. And more wizard types than a Scottish school for witchcraft and wizardry. This one w was a kid with glasses. One of the bodies has legs that were pretty muscular. There's definitely some high fiber flesh residue left on the thigh bones. I could pull off a chunk if we need it. You see what I mean? And the occasions where they're not reference jokes, they kill the jokes that work. But those were just minor to me. No, no, for me, the worst three, technically four, 
of these. I would, but there seems to be some green tentacles moving around down in there. I'm worried they might drag me in. Just be glad they aren't purple. Why is that? Purple ones are toxic and seem to constantly try to take over the world. They make better presidents than creatures in castle garbage disposals. Knife Sprinter. Oh, the craftsmanship of these windows is exquisite. It looks like two snakes intertwined and two purple tentacles. I hate purple tentacles. I prefer the green ones. Much nicer. Bad enough that you make a bad reference joke. But you make the same joke twice! Also, that's not even a good pun. That's just replacing the words with different words. So are we clear why this game isn't funny? At all! Number four. The gameplay. This is going to be a very quick one, but put simply, anyone who's played a point and click adventure game knows that the characters have infinite pocket space and limitless strength. However, in this game... It's so rusty! It will definitely shatter if I hit anything with it, but it may have other uses. I'll remember it's here. And aside from that, it suffers from the epitome of adventure game, no idea what to do a -tude. I have literally no clear direction at any given point. And what makes that even harder is it only sometimes operates linearly, and at other points, you can do it however you wish. So right from the get-go, you're stuck trying to work out some madman's method. And another thing, they have a timing puzzle that is unfathomably awkward to work. Finally, number five. The characters. They're all unlikable jackasses. Mona is a snobby bint with all the charm of Arnold Rimmer in a swimsuit in December. Froderick is like every single punchable jerk you see in any given teen comedy. The villain is a waste of animation cells. There is not one character in this entire game that I don't want to see burn for their sins. None of them! Even the ones who seem nice deserve death for the sin of being in this game. I'm looking at you, Iron Maiden. There's a character who's a talking Iron Maiden in this game. I'm not talking about the band. So there you have it. Five reasons why this game's very presence in my house is an embarrassment to my soul. Catch you all next time. So much for calm, cool and collected. I'd say he lost his head. Chin up, Rufus. Why so down? You have to keep looking up. His only direction, really. He's feeling down and out. Without a body, <laughs> he looks like a lowlife. You're depressing me. Don't be such a downer. I lost the <laughs> contact. Rufus, can you find it for me? How does it feel <laughs> to be a member of the lower class? Rufus, do I need to clip <laughs> my nose hair? Lonely now that you have no body? Enough. I get it. I get it. I have no body and I'm just a head. Happy now? Yes, pretty much.